Lane v. Wilson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Robinson in Birmingham, Alabama. Lane v. Wilson. An Opinion of the United States Supreme Court. Decided on May 22, 1939. Please note this is a reading of the opinion of the court only. For ease of listening, this reading omits legal citations found within the text of the court's opinion and footnotes. Mr. Justice Frankfurter delivered the opinion of the court. The case is here on certiorari to review the judgment of the Circuit Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, affirming that of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Oklahoma, entered upon a directed verdict in favor of the defendants. The action was won for $5,000 damages, brought under Section 1979 of the Revised Statutes, by a colored citizen claiming discriminatory treatment resulting from electoral legislation of Oklahoma in violation of the 15th Amendment. Certiorari was granted because of the importance of the question and an asserted conflict with the decision in Guin v. United States. The Constitution under which Oklahoma was admitted into the Union regulated the suffrage by Article Three, whereby its qualified electors were to be citizens of the state who are over the age of 21 years, with disqualifications in the case of felons, paupers, and lunatics. Soon after its admission, the suffrage provisions of the Oklahoma Constitution were radically amended by the addition of a literacy test, from which white voters were in effect relieved through the operation of a grandfather clause. The clause was stricken down by this court as violative of the prohibition against discrimination on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude of the 15th Amendment. This outlawry occurred on June 21, 1915. In the meantime, the Oklahoma general election of 1914 had been based on the offending grandfather clause. After the invalidation of that clause, a special session of the Oklahoma legislature enacted a new scheme for registration as a prerequisite to voting. Section 4 of this statute was obviously directed towards the consequences of the decision in Guin v. United States. Those who had voted in the general election of 1914 automatically remained qualified voters the new registration requirements affected only others. These had to apply for registration between April 30, 1916 and May 11, 1916, if qualified at that time, with an extension to June 30, 1916, given only to those absent from the county during such period of time, or prevented by sickness or unavoidable misfortune from registering within such time. The crux of the present controversy is the validity of this registration scheme, with its dividing line between white citizens who had voted under the Grandfather Clause immunity prior to Guin v. United States, and citizens who were outside it, and the not more than twelve days as the normal period of registration for the theretofore prescribed class. The petitioner, a colored citizen of Oklahoma, who was the plaintiff below and will hereafter be referred to as such, sued three county election officials for declining to register him on October 17, 1934. He was qualified for registration in 1916, but did not then get on the registration list. The evidence is in conflict whether he presented himself in that year for registration, and, if so, under what circumstances registration was denied him. The fact is that plaintiff did not get on the register in 1916. Under the terms of the statute, he thereby permanently lost the right to register, and hence the right to vote. The central claim of plaintiff is that of the unconstitutionality of Section 5654. The defendants joined issue on this claim, and further insisted that if there had been illegality in a denial of the plaintiff's right to registration, his proper recourse was to the courts of Oklahoma. 
the district court took the case from the jury and its action was affirmed by the circuit court of appeals it found no proof of discrimination against negroes in the administration of section fifty six fifty four and denied that the legislation was in conflict with the fifteenth amendment the defendants urged two bars to the plaintiff's recovery apart from the constitutional validity of section fifty six fifty four they say that on the plaintiff's own assumption of its invalidity there is no oklahoma statute under which he could register and therefore no right to registration has been denied secondly they argue that the state procedure for determining claims of discrimination must be employed before invoking a federal judiciary these contentions will be considered first for the disposition of a constitutional question must be reserved to the last the first objection derives from a misapplication of giles v harris in that case a bill in equity was brought by a colored man on behalf of himself and on behalf of more than five thousand negroes citizens of the county of montgomery alabama similarly situated which in effect asked the federal court to supervise the voting in that state by officers of the court what this court called a new and extraordinary situation was found strikingly to reinforce the argument that equity cannot undertake now any more than it has in the past to enforce political rights apart from this traditional restriction upon the exercise of equitable jurisdiction there was another difficulty in giles v harris the plaintiff there was in effect asking for specific performance of his right under alabama electoral legislation this presupposed the validity of the legislation under which he was claiming but the whole theory of his bill was the invalidity of this legislation naturally enough this court took his claim at its face value and found no legislation on the basis of which specific performance could be decreed this case is very different from giles v harris the difference having been explicitly foreshadowed by giles v harris itself in that case this court declared we are not prepared to say that an action at law could not be maintained on the facts alleged in the bill that is precisely the basis of the present action brought under the following appropriate legislation of congress to enforce the fifteenth amendment every person who under color of any statute of any state subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the united states within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights privileges or immunities secured by the constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law the fifteenth amendment secures freedom from discrimination on account of race in matters affecting the franchise whosoever under color of any statute subjects another to such discrimination thereby deprives him of what the fifteenth amendment secures and under section nineteen seventy nine becomes liable to the party injured in an action at law the theory of the plaintiff's action is that the defendants acting under color of section fifty six fifty four did discriminate against him because that section inherently operates discriminatorily if this claim is sustained his right to sue under revised statute section nineteen seventy nine follows the basis of this action is inequality of treatment though under color of law not denial of the right to vote the other preliminary objection to the maintenance of this action is likewise untenable to vindicate his present grievance the plaintiff did not have to pursue whatever remedy may have been open to him in the state courts normally the state legislative process sometimes exercised through administrative powers conferred on state courts must be completed before resort to the federal courts can be had but the state procedure open for one in the plaintiff's situation section fifty six fifty four has all the indicia of a conventional judicial proceeding and does not confer upon the oklahoma courts any of the discretionary or initiatory functions that are characteristic of administrative agencies barring only exceptional circumstances or explicit statutory requirements resort to a federal court may be had without first exhausting the judicial remedies of state courts we therefore cannot avoid passing on the merits of plaintiff's constitutional claims the reach of the fifteenth amendment against contrivances by a state to thwart equality in the enjoyment of the right to vote 
by citizens of the United States, regardless of race or color, has been amply expounded by prior decisions. The amendment nullifies sophisticated as well as simple-minded modes of discrimination. It hits onerous procedural requirements which effectively handicap exercise of the franchise by the colored race, although the abstract right to vote may remain unrestricted as to race. When in Guin v. United States, the Oklahoma Grandfather Clause was found violative of the 15th Amendment, Oklahoma was confronted with the serious task of devising a new registration system, consonant with her own political ideas, but also consistent with the Federal Constitution. We are compelled to conclude, however reluctantly, that the legislation of 1916 partakes too much of the infirmity of the Grandfather Clause to be able to survive. Section 5652 of the Oklahoma Statutes makes registration a prerequisite to voting. By Section 5654 and 5659, all citizens who were qualified to vote in 1916, but had not voted in 1914, were required to register, save in the exceptional circumstances, between April 30th and May 11th, 1916, and in default of such registration, were perpetually disenfranchised. Exemption from this onerous provision was enjoyed by all who had registered in 1914, but this registration was held under the statute which was condemned in the Guin case. Unfair discrimination was thus retained by automatically granting voting privileges for life to the white citizens whom the constitutional grandfather clause had sheltered, while subjecting colored citizens to a new burden. The practical effect of the 1916 legislation was to accord to the members of the Negro race who had been discriminated against in the outlawed registration system of 1914, not more than 12 days within which to reassert constitutional rights, which this court found in the Guin case to have been improperly taken from them. We believe that the opportunity thus given Negro voters to free themselves from the effects of discrimination to which they should never have been subjected was too cabined and confined. The restrictions imposed must be judged with reference to those for whom they were designed. It must be remembered that they were dealing with a body of citizens lacking the habits and traditions of political independence, and otherwise living in circumstances which do not encourage initiative and enterprise. To be sure, in exceptional cases, a supplemental period was available, but the narrow basis of the supplemental registration the very brief normal period of relief for the persons and purposes in question, practical difficulties of which the record in this case gives glimpses inevitable in the administration of such strict registration provisions, leaves no escape from the conclusion that the means chosen as substitutes for the invalidated grandfather clause were themselves invalid under the 15th Amendment. They operated unfairly against the very class on whose behalf the protection of the Constitution was here successfully invoked. The judgment of the Circuit Court of Appeals must, therefore, be reversed, and the cause remanded to the District Court for further proceedings in accordance with this opinion. Reversed and remanded. End of Lane v. Wilson, an opinion of the United States Supreme Court.